For about 15 seconds there, we were actually playing tennis. We understood each other completely. So did everyone watching. Okay, so let's talk about the film Challengers, the new film from Luca Guadagnino starring Zendaya, Mike Feist, and Josh O'Connor. We have a review for the film already. If you don't want spoilers, this is not the video for you. We're recapping the story. We're talking the ending. So let's get right into the film, which is Challengers, which is definitely one of our top five of the year so far. You can check out our like ranking right now. TV Glow, I don't know how that's gonna ever move, but that's where it is, number one. But let's talk about Challengers. Let's recap and how we got here. Before we get any further into this ending explosion, I want to let you know that we are running a giveaway. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is be subscribed to the channel and comment below. But let's get into Challengers. It's ending. So we have to start at the beginning with this film. Even though the film is told out of chronological order, it just goes back and forth between timelines over decades. And I really enjoy that because it is just like a tennis match. And everybody's saying that, right? I'm not the first one to say that, but it is a back and forth. They talked about this during the press conference, which we were luckily able to attend, just how they wanted to make this feel like a tennis match going back and forth. So what you have here are three characters. You have Tashi, who is played by Zendaya. You have Art, who is played by Mike Feist. And you have Patrick, who is played by Josh O'Connor. Art and Patrick have been friends for as long as they can remember. They went to boarding school together. They were in tennis club, all of that, and ultimately grew up with the sport and with each other. Tashi is like the top of her peers when it comes to the junior division and all that and this is where they meet actually during this like contest um, that's happening during the US Open as well. So I'll leave a timeline here of everything if you just want a quick like talk about the timeline in itself and then you can skip to the ending right here on the time uh, that I'm putting up on the screen if you want to. So 2006 Tashi, Patrick and Art meet for the first time. 2006 Tashi and Patrick start dating after Tashi said whoever wins y'all's match gets to get my number and then in 2007 we see that Tashi and Art go to Stanford and this is when Art starts to sow doubt into both Patrick and Tashi about their relationship and we see that this ultimately leads to a big fight in which Tashi leaves Patrick and goes to play her game which ultimately leads to her injury in 2007 as well and both Tashi and Patrick break up because of this. Two years later in 2009, we see that Art asks Tashi to be his assistant coach when Tashi comes back into his life. And ultimately, we see that in 2011, both Tashi and Art are together now, but then Tashi and Patrick sleep together when Patrick comes back into the picture, seeing that there are still some unresolved issues between the both of them and feelings and ultimately led to that. And this also is a moment when you can ask yourself, was that really Art's daughter or could it be Patrick as well? And we jump forward to 2019 when they have both Patrick and Art competing in the Challengers match in which we see that Art has to win if not Tashi will leave him. And we see that Tashi made sure there is insurance by telling Patrick he has to lose against Art. And that same night, both Patrick and Tashi sleep together and Patrick tells Art the truth and ultimately Art is able to beat Patrick by using this rage and also they ultimately get back together. The two friends, Patrick and Art, are immediately attracted to Tashi and ultimately want to get to know her. And this is what ensues kind of a rivalry between the two, almost like friendly competition as well as who's going to get Tashi first. Tashi ultimately knows this as well and uses it to her advantage as well, almost manipulating them at times, as you can see throughout the whole film. When she goes to hang out with both of them and kisses both of them and also makes both of them kiss each other because deep down she knows that there's something going on between these two and Tashi makes it clear right from the get go, hey, I don't want to be a home record to this relationship. We ultimately see, however, that she says, you know what, one of you can have my number and we'll see where that goes. But it's whoever wins the match between the two of you that you're going to be having. And this is when they're like teenagers and young. Ultimately, Patrick wins that match. But then we see that Art does immediately go to Stanford with Tashi and they kind of have this friendship going on. And at the same time, Tashi and Patrick are dating and Art is jealous about this. So he immediately starts to sow them doubt into to their relationship, talking to both Tashi and Patrick saying, hey, maybe it's not exactly gonna work out. Maybe y'all don't really like each other. 
Immediately, both of them are on the defensive, Tashi and Patrick. And then they have a little argument, which kind of escalates into more because out of this argument, we see that Tashi goes on to have her match. Patrick doesn't attend this match. And we see that this is where Tashi gets injured, which causes her injury that makes her not be able to play tennis anymore. We then see that years pass on and an art is now going into competitions. He has a tennis coach, all of this. And then he sees Tashi. They both start to stoke those flames they might've had in the past and we see that this is where their relationship starts for the both of them Tashi is coaching now and Art says why don't you be my coach and Tashi asks Art if there are still any feelings if he loves her or anything like that still which he immediately starts to be defensive about but ultimately they share a kiss and we see that this leads into them now being married Art is a successful tennis player Tashi is like his big time coach they are a power couple they're doing brand deals they're on faces they're in commercials they're on billboards all the nine yards and they also have a daughter together it's about eight years and eight years is going to be something you got to think about in a bit when i tell you this eight years is very important to take into account because we ultimately see that art is now almost nearing the end of his career he looks like he wants to give it up he wants to retire but he at least wants to win the u.s open and so he has to qualify for that playing a challenger which of course is the name of the film challenge which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that going into the film beforehand. And so at this big event, and it's been now like 13 years since the first time that Patrick, Art, and Tashi met. And at this big event, we see Patrick is also going to be playing. And so Patrick and Art are going to go head to head. And one thing to note is that Art has never beat Patrick before. This sort of is an obstacle that Art has to get through now. It's been years since they talked as well after everything that happened between Tashi, Art, and Patrick. And so we see now all these years later that Patrick has been sort of still trying to be pro. He's still trying to make it up the ranks, all of this. And so he is going to go face to face now with Art. And Tashi asks Patrick when they meet up, please let Art win that he needs this. He needs to win. He needs to do this. It's like his calling. And Patrick's like, no, no way I'm going to do that. And Patrick earlier on had asked Tashi to be his coach which Tashi did not do. She said that she would not do that at all. But now Tashi is here asking Patrick to give up this match and lose so that Art can win and go forward into the US Open. We also get a flashback of eight years prior to this uh, date here when Tashi and Art are now a couple and they're together. And we see that Art ultimately came into the picture at one point because Tashi still had some feelings for Patrick and they had a night together. That's what it is insinuated in the film and we also know that Art had an idea about this because he caught a quick glimpse of this. And something to note here also is that the daughter wasn't born yet so it kind of implies that it could be Patrick's daughter or it could be Art's daughter and it kind of leaves it up in the air. I mean a lot of people in my theater when they were walking out were saying who's the dad? That was the big question right? Who is the dad of the kid? And it doesn't answer it and we can just go ahead and imply it could either be Patrick or Art at this point. But we ultimately see that Tashi wants Patrick to give up the match and they end up sleeping together the night before the big match. So there's still some feelings there. After all of these years, they've hooked up as well throughout even when Tashi and Art are married and together. There's still some feelings between Patrick and Tashi as they continue to hook up as well. Even though Art and Patrick haven't talked in years and their whole like friendship has been completely destroyed, they have a quick little meeting in the sauna and sort of have Patrick trying to sort of say, hey, let's put things at ease. Whatever happens, we can still be friends. We can start over all of this, which Art does not want to do at all. He says he's there to win and that's it. During the match, we see that they both get the advantage back and forth, just like the tennis match. And we see that Tashi feels she is in control. And one of the key things I think that was so interesting that Luca does is Tashi's character is just looking straight down the middle during the game most of the game uh three quarters of the game i will say while the rest of the people that are in the stands are going back and forth back and forth seeing where the balls are going it's almost like tashi doesn't have to look anywhere because she knows 
Patrick's going to give up this match and that's what she wants. And she told him already to do this. So she feels very in control of this moment. It is not until the final part of the game where she is not feeling in control anymore. And so what happens here is they are pretty much tied. And this is the moment when Patrick is supposed to give up the game to Art and he decides not to do this. Instead, what Patrick decides to do is tell Art, hey, me and Tashi, just slept together. And the way to do this without them communicating is that Patrick takes the tennis ball, puts it in the middle of the racket because this was a sign they had made up years ago when Tashi and Patrick first dated. Art wanted to know if him and Tashi had slept together. He said, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. And Art said, okay, you know what? Don't say it. Just show me. Just give me a signal. And that tells me that y'all did this. All those years ago, 12 years ago, they came up with this signal that would be when Patrick puts his ball in the middle of the racket right before he serves, just like Art does, that means I slept with Tashi. And we see Patrick do that many years ago. And now we see him do it right now, which immediately is both Patrick and Art communicating without even talking. And now Art knows what happened between Patrick and Tashi the night before. And nobody else knows, not even Tashi. And this is where we see Art just have a complete meltdown and get some violation points because he curses and all of this. And everybody's just like, what is even happening? But only Art and Patrick know. This then leads to Art just slamming a ball towards Patrick, which doesn't hit him, but you can tell that was gonna take his head off if it did. And then he kind of has this moment of, he's calm now and they play a hell of a match. Their best match they've ever played back and forth, back and forth, kinetic energy after kinetic energy. And it is just like, it's the two of them, nobody else, which goes back to a part in the film when Tashi is talking about the sport of tennis and how it is the two of you only at the time when you're playing which I'll play here because I think Tashi says it better and so by the end of the match we see as Art is going up to give the final serve and he pretty much wins the match and him and also Patrick embrace and Tashi is up she's ecstatic and she is glad that Art won. Tashi had given Art the ultimatum the night before that if you lose I'm leaving you and so Art really did not want to lose as well. And ultimately we saw that she had a sort of insurance by telling Patrick, you have to give up and lose because Art needs to win. So what exactly happened in that insane ending? So first and foremost, Art won. He won against Patrick. Patrick didn't give up the game easily. I think the thing with Patrick was he loved both Tashi and he also loved Art. There was never a moment where he didn't love Art, I think, because even at the times when they were in Stanford and Art was talking about he liked Tashi and all of this, Patrick didn't feel a sort of like animosity towards Art to go after him or anything like that because he said he kind of likes seeing Art like this, getting sort of fired up. And I think thinking about Patrick telling that to Art, I think we can go back to the final match they had where Patrick knew that he could just easily give up the match or he could see Art fired up. And what more would fire Art up than to know that Patrick and Tashi had slept together and thus this would make Art play like at 110% and he could win fair and square. Like it was a legit like match that they wanted to have. I think that Patrick felt it was sort of disingenuous and sort of bad if he just let Art win like this because he wanted Art to know he could beat him and so they wanted to all play at 100%. And I think that's the reason that Patrick told Art what happened between him and Tashi. Now, I think that Art was pissed at first about all of this, but at the same time, he felt this communication that he hadn't had with Patrick in all of these years was back. They were able to talk about this. Tashi was sort of that glue and also the home wrecker, as Tashi said, for both of these guys who felt some feelings towards each other that were never really resolved. And we saw that in the time when they were teenagers and they were kissing each other as well, even though they really weren't saying about being together or anything like that ever in the film. But there was these feelings that were sort of pressed, if you will. But now they were able to fully express them. And I think all of those years as well of just hiding themselves in Tashi and in tennis without actually talking to one another, I think all of that just boiled over and exploded by the end of it and they just couldn't help but to embrace one another. I think Tashi as well knows that she is so infatuated with tennis and tennis is her life and this is all she wants and ultimately I think Patrick and Art are people that she cares about 
uh, to a certain degree, but I think that she cares more about sort of her goals and sort of tennis and the sport itself. And I know something that Art says at one point is, I'm playing for both of us. And this is sort of Tashi as well, getting her big hoorah in through what Art does as well. Even though she can't play, she can still sort of go through that motion because she is the coach. She is sort of the force behind it. And I think that that just fulfills her to be able to see Art do great in the sport. And at the same time, she also still has some strong feelings for Patrick because that is who she was at first with. And you can also go back and think about that. Maybe this has all happened because Art wanted Patrick and Tashi to break up. There's an interview where they talk about this and I'll play it so you can check it out. Have you seen it again? I've only seen it once. Well, so keep it that way. Once you, oh, go, once you come back. You let me know. But in that interview, the interview basically says that they were pissed at Tashi's character. And then Josh O'Connor and Zendaya say, you got to watch it again to know who you got to be pissed at. And they all point to Mike Feist who of course plays art. And I think that definitely when you look at it that way, I went into the movie after watching that interview. So I was like, all right, open mind. Let's see what's going on. Let's look at art. Art really is the one who starts to plant these seeds of doubt into Tashi and Patrick's relationship. He sort of is jealous. He likes Tashi as well. He wants Tashi. And maybe uh, to a certain degree, he feels some jealousy for both Tashi and Patrick. And so he wants this sort of split to happen. And he sows these doubts into both of them if they really are are compatible if they are for one another or whatever the case may be. And so once we see that they have this big fight, both Tashi and Patrick, and then Tashi has to go play her game. She ultimately gets her injury because of that. And they ultimately split after that. And this leads them into this path now where Art is the pro player. Tashi is married to Art. Patrick goes on this path where he isn't really that big tennis player at all anymore. And he's just getting by. You see that there is definitely something there at play with what Art did from the beginning because of his jealousy. And so that's a whole other way to look at it. That's a whole other conversation to have. I do want to talk more about the themes and all of that, which we'll probably talk about more of that in another video. So stay tuned for that. If you want to see more challenger videos or talk about it more, let me know in the comments down below. But I just want to talk about the ending right there. I really do you think this ending is more of a happy ending for all three of them? They are all dependent on one another. They are all seeking something from one another. When it's just two of them, it doesn't really work out because they are still longing for the other piece. And that's the case here. We saw that Art was longing for Patrick the way they embrace at the end. We saw Tashi was longing for Patrick as well by that moment they had together in the car the night before the match. And it sort of is in a weird way that they have to all be together. And that's what it is for them. This is a film about a throuple and they are needing one another. That's why they were so, you could say, miserable throughout the time when one piece was missing. And now we see that they are whole again. Tashi's happy that Art won and the tennis is going forward. And Patrick and also Art are happy that they're reunited and talking again. And they're both happy. Tashi's right there at their corner. So honestly, very great storytelling here from Justin Kuritzkiv, who wrote the, the script. And really excited to see what they do next with Luca Guadagnino and the film Queer with Daniel Craig. That's going to be another one that I'm excited for. I think Luca's 444 with American films. And I'm excited to see what they do with the next one. I still have to look at Luca Guadagnino's Italian films. And yeah, let me know what you thought about the ending of Challenge. Challengers, what did you think about the relationship between Patrick and Art by the end of it and Tashi? I think this is the way that I saw it. Honestly, there might be some other ways you look at it as well. Do you think Art was the snake? Do you think uh, Patrick was the snake? Do you think Tashi was the snake? I'm curious because there's so much of this going around right now on social media of who really was the villain here. I think these are just flawed characters. They all want different things. They all are longing for something and they're just human. I don't think there's really per se an evil or a villainous person in this. It's just everybody wanted something different. But I think by the end, everybody got what they wanted. And I think they're all happy now. So what better way to end a film, right? But let me know your thoughts and opinions. Make sure you follow us. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment below so you can enter the giveaway. Just be subscribed and comment below your thoughts and opinions. That gets you an entry into the giveaway. And as always, that is going to do it for me. Go check us out on our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. On Instagram, we're running a giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be following us at 100 subscribers or followers over there. We'll be announcing the giveaway and how to enter. So make sure you go over there right now. Leave it somewhere over here. But as always, that's going to do it for me. 30,000 subscribers, less than 500 to go. I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.